Hi, this is Tom from ZeroToFinals.com. In this video, I'm going to be going through celiac disease. You can find written notes on this topic at ZeroToFinals.com slash celiac or in the gastroenterology section of the Zero to Finals Medicine book. So let's jump straight in. Celiac disease is an autoimmune condition where exposure to gluten causes an immune reaction that causes inflammation in the small bowel. It usually develops in early childhood, but it can come on at any age. In celiac disease, autoantibodies, so antibodies against the body's own tissues, are created in response to exposure to gluten, and the autoantibodies target the epithelial cells of the intestine and cause inflammation in these areas. There's two autoantibodies that you need to remember. Anti-tissue transglutaminase, which is anti-TTG, and the second one is anti-endomesial antibodies, which is anti-EMA. And these antibodies also relate to disease activity, so they'll rise and fall depending on how active the disease is, and they may disappear when there's effective treatment. The inflammation affects the small bowel, particularly an area called the jejunum, which is just after the duodenum, and it causes atrophy of the intestinal villi, and they're really important for absorbing nutrients from the food that's passing through the intestine. So inflammation of these areas causes malabsorption of nutrients and the symptoms of the disease. So how do patients with celiac disease present? Well, they often are asymptomatic, so you need to have a low threshold for testing for celiac disease in patients where it may be suspected. Some common presenting features are failure to thrive in young children, so they're not developing weight and doing well, diarrhea, tiredness or fatigue, weight loss, mouth ulcers are quite common in celiac disease, and then anemia secondary to deficiency of iron, B12 and folate because they're not absorbing those nutrients. There's also a typical rash called dermatitis herpetiformis, which is an itchy, blistering rash that typically occurs on the abdomen. And this is quite a common exam question. So think about celiac disease with a rash like this. Rarely, celiac disease can present with neurological symptoms like peripheral neuropathy, cerebellar ataxia, and epilepsy. And just a quick Tom tip, remember that we test all new cases of type 1 diabetes, even if they don't have symptoms we test them for celiac disease because the conditions are often linked. There's two genes that are associated with celiac disease, HLA-DQ2, which is the most commonly associated gene with celiac disease, and the second is HLA-DQ8. There's three autoantibodies associated with celiac disease. The first two you really need to remember, and these are anti-tissue transglutaminase or anti-TTG and anti-endomesial antibodies or anti-EMA and the third one is deanimated gliadin peptides antibodies but these are less commonly found in your exams and in real life. A quick Tom tip, anti-TTG and anti-EMA antibodies are IgA antibodies and some patients have an IgA deficiency So when you test for these antibodies, it's also important to test for total immunoglobulin A because if the total IgA is low, then you'll have a low level of anti-TTG and anti-EMA antibodies even when the patient has celiac disease. So you might get a false negative test. So if you test the IgA levels and they're low and you suspect that you might get a false negative result, then you can test the IgG version of anti-TTG and anti-EMA. Or you can simply do an endoscopy with biopsies and confirm the result. Which leads us on to how to establish a diagnosis. One thing that you need to remember is that investigations must be carried out while the patient's still having a diet containing gluten. Otherwise, it might not be possible to detect the antibodies or the inflammation in the bowel. So to start with, check the total IgA levels to exclude IgA deficiency and then check for anti-TTG antibodies, which is typically the first choice, or check for anti-EMA antibodies. 
one way to definitively establish a diagnosis is to do an endoscopy and do intestinal biopsies, which will show classic signs that you should remember for your exams, and these are crypt hypertrophy and villus atrophy on the biopsy results. There's a few associations with celiac disease, and these are all autoimmune conditions, so things like type 1 diabetes, thyroid disease, autoimmune hepatitis, primary biliary cirrhosis, and primary sclerosing cholangitis. And there's a few complications of untreated celiac disease. So if you don't treat the celiac disease, it'll lead on to what can be quite severe complications. So vitamin deficiency and anemia will occur quite quickly. Osteoporosis can occur. The jejunum can become ulcerated and you get ulcerative jejunitis. It's also associated with something called enteropathy-associated T-cell lymphoma, or EATL, which is a type of lymphoma of the intestine that can occur in celiac disease. It's associated with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma and small bowel adenocarcinoma. So finally, we need to talk about treatment, which is quite simple. If the patient follows a lifelong gluten-free diet, this is essentially curative. And if they start consuming gluten again, their symptoms will come back and they'll have a relapse of the condition. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked the video, left a comment or subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much, it really helps. Zero to Finals is not just a YouTube channel. There's also a website with detailed notes, illustrations and questions. An Instagram account where new questions are posted every day to help you test your knowledge. Books, flashcards and much more. I also have a personal channel where I share my thoughts and tips on learning medicine and you can find links to everything in the description of this video. See you next time.